So I'm sitting in the airport in Nashville, getting ready to get on a flight to Denver, and um, sitting there, you know, in the waiting area with the seats, and uh, it's a bunch of guys, and obviously we're musicians, um, you know, wearing, you know, the musician's uniform, and I'm not going to describe it. I don't need to. I don't think. Um, but um, other than the fact it didn't have a sign saying I'm in a band. Uh, so we were sitting there and I was reading and one of the guys came over to me and turned out to be the tour manager for One Republic. We do an annual uh, Christmas charity concert, an acoustic show, <clears throat> that kind of be accidentally became an annual thing. And last year, the, day, the night before the show, our tour manager was in the Nashville airport and John was flying back to Aspen from Nashville. He said, oh, you know, um, we're going to do a, One Republic's doing a charity event in Denver tomorrow night. And I was like, oh, great, you know, and he goes, you want to come? And I was like, well, I said, you know, we've been away for like a month and our son's waiting for us and we got to get home and it was the weekend getting him out. He goes to a boarding school in Colorado. I said, I don't know. And, and so, you know, I, I wasn't really thinking about what it was all about. And of course, my wife, being a lot smarter than me um, in a lot of, on a lot of levels, took me aside at the newsstand and said, you got to go play with those guys. And I'm like, oh, come on. And she said, yeah, just go. You go to Denver. It's only one day. Just go and do it. He agreed to do it last minute. He was the surprise guest. And the whole, the whole place, of course, freaked out. It's like, and I've got John Oates from Hall & Oates coming. Like nobody knew. And uh, he sang, I think, four or five of his songs. We did one or two with him. And um, the crowd went nuts and he was amazing. And we ended up talking for a long time about guitars and music and uh, uh, just, yeah, just hit it off. We played Man Eater and had some fun and did a bunch of songs and got to hang out with them. And, and while I was backstage, um, I got Ryan in a headlock and I said, hey, you want to do a song with me? Uh, and he said, well, yeah, maybe. And I explained to him what I was doing. I told him the people I was working with and what the project was about. He said, yeah, let's do it. Now it's just a matter of time. Let's figure out when we can get together. And so he kept saying, hey, when are we going to do this? We're going to do this. And, and I said, I'd love to do a song. And uh, he happened to find me like on the one day I was home. And um, he came in. We had a window of time. I think he was flying back to Aspen or something. And um, he walked in and played me a couple songs and that were awesome, completely different than anything that I would have done. He listened to about four or five songs and he went, he goes, your stuff's really cool, he said, but if I'm going to do something, he goes, I want it to be something where people go, what is that? I can't believe that John Oates did this on this album. And I said, okay, cool, now let's do something that sounds nothing like any of that, just because that's my kind of knee-jerk reaction with anybody. It's like, you play me a bunch of cool stuff, I, want to, I don't want to do any of that, let's do something over here. So he picked up a guitar and just played this really simple rock riff. Like super, super simple. And of course, me being who I am, I pick up the guitar and start making it way more complicated. And he said, no, 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 no. He goes, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna make it really hard. We're gonna make it really extreme. And I said, okay, man, show me the way. The inspiration was doing the antithesis of everything I'd heard. And, I, and not from a, it wasn't from a, a like a, a recoil or a negative, oh my God, I don't like this, I wanna do that. It was more, okay, well, I'm not gonna do Vince Gill better than Vince Gill. He goes, you got any titles? I said, okay. I opened up my computer and I had this title called Stone Cold Love. And he goes, that's it, perfect. So he put his headphones on and he sat at the computer and I was just sitting there and next thing I knew I was watching the screen and all these tracks began to appear. Just like And I was like, okay, he's on to something. I have no clue what he's doing because he had headphones on because I couldn't hear what he was doing. I just started playing in from some samples I have, this crazy beat and this weird vocal thing, and, and it just felt dirty. I just wanted to do something badass. I said, can we just do something short and badass, and that's it. I want it to be something where people hear it, his fans hear it, and even people that know that I had anything to do with it hear it and go, you did what? So I said, well, I'm not just gonna sit here. <laughs> so I pulled out a piece of paper and I started writing lyrics. I don't even know what I was writing. I just started writing stuff and just stream of consciousness stuff, stuff, and I started writing. And about, um, I guess about 30, 35, 40 minutes later, he took his headphones off, said, check this out. And he played this track, and it was like really crazy and really cool, like total rock, total modern. And I mean, the closest thing I could say is like Black Keys or Jack White. It was really just edgy and 
powerful. I get off on, on throwing people a left a curveball and them just going, I thought I had, I had you pegged and this is completely not at all what I thought you would have done. And we just, I spent a lot of time with him on the cadence and the delivery and I put his voice through a guitar amp so it sounds really just edgy and, and messed up. He was very specific about what he wanted. Um, and he, it was really cool for me to be directed in that way and be really, have someone so focused on the end, on where we were going. And I wasn't sure where that was, but he knew in his head, he, he, he had it in his head. And he put my vocal through this really crazy sound and it's just this really extreme thing. And when it was done, I, was, I sat back and I went, man, I never would have done anything like this in a million years. I said, this is so cool. I was like listening back and I was like, I was like, that's, actually amazing that's really cool it's not like it's just like it's awesome and I, I loved it I didn't even you know you normally I have to edit stuff down I'm, I'm just really really particular like really about anything and he just got it and then I was like oh yeah that's right you've been doing this for 30 years <laughs> that's what that's the beauty of this whole project is that you you get to work with people and see how their minds work and how they're you know, and where they're going with this, and and, and you know, if, and I just, I think my biggest struggle was to keep an open mind and stay out of their way. Uh, in this case, I definitely stayed out of Ryan Tedder's way. Um, so this song, Stone Cold Love, is is definitely, uh, as he said, it is definitely the track on the album that won't sound like anything else. <laughs> Love me like it's a fist fight Take me down like a train ride Turn me out from the inside <laughs>